So John, if you're, we will get things rolling. Um, as we have started our prior meetings, I just want to remind everyone of a couple of things. The meeting's being held via Zoom under the law signed by Governor Baker on July 16th, 2022, granting authority for such virtual meetings and extended by Governor Healy through March 31st, 2025. Uh, I know that there will be some further discussion among the group as to whether or not it makes sense to have some in-person meetings, but certainly this has made it convenient and allowed us to, to get through the difficult times uh, we've all been experiencing. Uh, in addition, I want to remind everyone MCB records these meetings, uh, that those recordings are um, make, made available uh, to the public. Uh, so just as a reminder for that. And um, finally, just want to welcome our public members. Uh, just taking a look, we have about 20 attendees. Thank you for joining us. And um, what we typically will do is assure that we have uh, allocated time at the end of our business component to uh, answer or address any questions that you may have. So if you don't mind holding those questions until the end, we would certainly appreciate that. If some burning issue that um, you want to make a point for, certainly feel free to either speak up or post some information in the chat if that's comfortable for you. So with that, our first order of business is to vote to accept the minutes from April 4th. I would appreciate a motion from a member of the statutory advisory board to approve the minutes. I'd make that motion. Thank you, Blair. Appreciate that. A second, please. Second. Second from Colleen. Thank you very much. All in favor, please either say aye or raise your hand. Aye. aye. Thank you. Looks unanimous. Thank you all very much. Appreciate that. Um, next on our agenda is, as we've had, you know, historically an update from uh, what we will say is now the acting commissioner, uh, John. So, John, a couple of things um, that were asked and I was hoping maybe you could address to whatever extent you're comfortable or can and anybody else on the line. There were some questions just about the next steps for the position. Uh, I know that there was some understanding that perhaps by August there would be some information. Do you have anything you could share with us just in terms of how the process will work from here? Um, and then we can move on to some other discussion areas. Thank you, Howard. Um, I, I don't really have much to say about the process, and it's it's a normal process that, that will be managed by the secretary's office and Secretary Walsh, and um, we'll we'll move forward from that. So I'm uh, acting commissioner until that process is completed, and um, then we'll uh, we'll move forward from there. So. Um, so I'd like to to get to talk about the what is happening here at the agency at this point. And, uh, and I'm sorry, John, I'm going to interrupt just for one second. Um, there is a question from Kathy. And before we go to Kathy, I would just say, so uh, would we expect that the new commissioner would be announced in August or not necessarily? Or do you know? I do. I do not know if it'd be announced in August or before or after. Okay. All right, and is there anyone else on the line that could provide any additional clarity to that? Okay, not hearing any at the moment then. Uh, Kathy, please, did you have a question? Well, my question, uh, John, is you mentioned the Secretary Walsh will proceed with the normal process. Not knowing what that normal process is, could you shed any light on that? Do you have information about what the normal process is? Thanks, Kathy. Um, the process would would be that uh, candidates who are interested or they're interested in will be contacted and will be interviewed and will be vetted and then be appointed. So that's that's how the process goes. So is there a, like a job opening that people apply for this type of position or? No, there currently is not a job opening. I mean, the yeah. acting role and so there, I mean, I, I don't know if there's a job opening. Commissioner's jobs, I don't believe, are posted. Right. Um, as a regular job, but, but, you know, again, that's not, um, I, don't, I don't have any responsibility as far as that goes. Um, and um, so um, the other, so, 
David D'Arcangelo continues with MCB as an advisor. So um, he and I are working together and we'll, we'll continue to work together and move forward. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and, and I just wanna say for, for everyone, I know we have a few other members of the leadership and, and members of MCB. Uh, I, I will just forgive, uh, ask for forgiveness for all of us. Many of us are new to this. So what for you all is, is sort of common knowledge for us is so things we're still learning. So forgive us for asking some of the basics, but you know, and I think maybe I know a couple additional pieces I can add to this. I know that they, it is open for any recommendations anybody would like to make if they have somebody that they're thinking of that they think would be a good candidate. Um, and then my understanding is all those people will be evaluated and assessed. But I do not, as has been mentioned by John, I do not believe there's any sort of job posting of any sort. And there is a very specific criteria um, that the commissioner needs to have. So if you're not familiar with that, you might want to reacquaint yourself with that as well. Uh, helpful to just understand that. Um, so, John, we'll, we'll throw it back to you if you wanted to give us some updates from your perspective. I know a lot's been put in your lap, and we appreciate you taking the responsibility, but could you update us on kind of how life has been for the past month? <laughs> sure. So, we've been busy here at MCB. So, as the, the, the budget process continues, as uh, most of you know, the uh, governor's budget came out and funded the agency at $27.1 million, right around uh, level funding. So the, the budget process continues through the House. We'll keep you all informed. Um, in the years past, the legislature has been very, uh, very supportive of, of MCB and has uh, provide us, provided us with a, a funding for us to deliver the services that, that we, uh, we are accustomed to here in, in the Commonwealth. Um, so MCB continues to move forward, uh, serving consumers here in Massachusetts. Um, we are um, still doing all of our projects. Nothing has, has changed. Um, you'll hear a little bit la uh, later this morning from Nathan Scrocky, who will be presenting some of the data that was requested by the SAB. Um, and some of that in data will be interesting. And then in this, uh, uh, very informative to us at MCB. We keep track of that and uh, keep adjusting what we do and what we're going to do based on a lot of that information that's coming through. As far as, um, you know, uh, working with the staff, we have pulled everyone together. We've had um, agency meetings. We continue to work with, stealth, uh, with staff and, and boost their morale at the agency. Uh, we have some ideas that we are currently developing and haven't been uh, put in place, but will be uh, happening over over the next uh, two to two to three weeks. Um, I continue to serve as acting uh, commissioner. I also am, am maintaining duties as deputy commissioner, and our CFO has left the agency left the agency on April twenty first. So the CFO role has gone over to me until we put someone else in place. Um, this Thursday, we're interviewing five candidates uh, for the CFO position. Um, looks like we have some very strong candidates and hopefully we will find an individual um, that um, fits that role and uh, we can get them on board as soon as possible uh, at MCB. I'm sure uh, nobody also, wants that more than you do, John. <laughs> <laughs> so we also have a new budget director at, at MCB. Uh, he started on April 24th. Um, and uh, this has been a position that's been quite, uh, I guess one could say fluid here at MCB. This is our fourth budget director in the past four and a half years or so. So, um, I knew the budget director is learning a lot of stuff uh, from scratch also because he didn't come from another, he didn't come from the human service world and, and the, and the Commonwealth, but he has a lot of experience managing uh, budgets in municipalities and, uh, and agencies. So um, the staff are pulling together uh, that are in fiscal and are working with him. Uh, I spent the past couple of days getting things docu-signed so that he can have all the proper access that he he would need 
to manage the different aspects of the budget here at MCB. And so we're looking forward to doing that. We continue to, to bring new staff on board. Uh, last uh, April 24th, we had four people start here at MCB. We continue to post jobs. We are interviewing. Um, everything is, 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 is moving forward as, as, uh, as we can. Um, there's a survey that went out to uh, all of MCB's consumers. Uh, I went out in uh, uh, by uh, email and by text, and on April 25th, it went out by mail. So um, it's um, it's quite an extensive survey, and we are getting um, excellent results uh, coming in. <clears throat> so uh, Nathan Scrocky is managing that project. So. If there's any questions on that, we don't. All we know is basic, some basic numbers at this point. <clears throat> but we um, uh, are looking forward to reviewing those results. They will not be available to us until uh, the end of June. So we'll be looking at that and uh, um, get some good information out of it. Uh, the returns are good. Uh, the email returns were were good as far as replying to the survey and completing it. So um, it's um, it's going to be exciting for us to look at uh, what our consumers are are saying and feeling, and uh, we will uh, do the best we can to uh, to move the programs um, forward. And uh, it's pretty much you know we we just continue to move forward and are are looking forward to. Uh, the budget and our new fiscal year and uh and providing the services that we can provide so i i have some program updates i can give those a little bit later yeah that's great john thank you uh, first a couple of things i did have a couple of questions before we go yep. any further i know i speak on behalf of the certainly the sab but i probably speak on behalf of everyone on this call we all recognize uh the burden this is placed on you and you, your ability to step up and do your best to continue the to move the needle and move forward is appreciated by everyone. So I just wanna make sure that that, that is clear and I, I am confident I speak for everyone here. Uh, we appreciate your efforts. Uh, based on what you just said, I did have two questions. One, I think pretty straightforward. And so the survey you said end of June, you'd basically have the data, I think. Can you give us an idea of when we may all be able to start to see some of the results so, of that? So the data was come, is coming in to the company that's that's our, our vendor and then they, have about 30 days to do the analysis and they have to get it to us by june 30th which is the close of the fiscal year so um they are collecting it they'll analyze it and then they'll they'll speak with us about it and obviously yes we will share it with with the board we'll share it with consumers uh, we'll post up the uh, the results up on our, our website and uh, we can talk about it as much as we uh, can i mean it's it's great to hear I think the last number that I got from Nate, uh, and he's on the call, if I'm not correct, it was about 1,300 had uh, replied to the survey. So, um, Great. So would it be fair to say we might see this in the summer? I, I, would, I would think so. Uh, okay. If we have it by Trying to get 30th, some idea on time frame. Right. Yeah. So we could expect to see something in the summer. That's great. Uh, back to the budget. I think good news in terms of, you know, pretty consistent with what we've had before. Can you walk us through? And again, I know this is basic for you, but but not necessarily for the rest of us. Um, so what happens next? You get the budget. You get it confirmed at some point. You know what we have. What is the process then that you and the team go through to sort of get it now to the next level? Can you help us a little bit with that? All right. So. So it goes through the, the process at the, at, you know, at, at the, the state house. And then once we get the final budget, what will happen, what will happen before that in May, our, uh, our directors will be surveyed and they will submit their budgets that they feel they need based on the upcoming fiscal year. So we analyze that, we take that information, we put it all into um, a system, and then we get our our final budget sort of towards the end of June, but we can't move forward until the governor signs it. So it is usually the first week of July or so. 
So once the governor signs that budget, then it's opened. Um, we have, uh, we'll know what, what the amount is. And so will everybody else's public knowledge. And we know what our managers asked for needed. And then that money gets um, divided up into the different regions, into different programs and dropped into the proper uh, activity codes. And then um, once the governor signs it, we're, we're open for business. So um, usually again, it, it's within the first week of July. If the governor takes longer to sign it than the, than the, within the first week, then they they tell us to load what's uh, like a one twelfth budget. So whatever what, what the agency budget turned out to be, we take one twelfth of it and we um, put that into the programs. And then when the budget is actually signed, the rest is loaded in to the to the program services. Thank you, John. So two questions on that, if I may. And then my colleagues, if you have any questions, please feel free to either raise your hand or wave at me or just speak up. Um, so as far as the budget is concerned, I understand the process now of your managers, you know, they sort of decide what their needs are. Is that, John, is that typically zero based? Meaning are they just saying, this is what we had last time. It's the same budget. So we're going to present the same thing. Or do you expect them to sort of zero budget start again, build their budget in terms of what they think their needs are? That would be part one of the question. Part two, do you think there would be any value in the SAB having an opportunity to input into what it thinks um, about how you've allocated, et cetera? Would there be any value in our input? So two questions, if you don't mind. So the, the managers take, um, when they submit what they believe they need, they take what they they spent last year and at, at points throughout the year, like at, at mid-year, they have a chance to ask for more money in area and programs that they feel are, are, are may run low or were used more money than they had expected. And so that money is given to them. So, um, you know, they will um, come up with a figure based on what they spent this year um and then what they believe the need will be like like if they if they see a drop in college students they may not ask for if they know say 12 of their 20 college students graduated and they only see six new ones coming in that were say seniors in high school they might estimate that only eight or nine college students may be going, people who move in from out of state or that sort of thing. Someone decides at the last minute to go. So they may adjust their, their figure when they ask for that. Uh, when, they, when they see homemaker services uh, not being utilized, that's the chore services that people come into the homes and, and do help out around the, the house. Uh, if they see that hasn't been utilized or they don't have much demand of, uh, of consumers waiting, they may drop the request on that. Or if they see it, uh, a, a, an increase in demand, they may raise their request on that. So the, the director really analyzes all their programs on the utilization, and then they also uh, analyze what the, uh, what the, the increasing need might be. And, and so that's how they come up with what they're asking us for and then we uh, allocate what they're looking for. In some cases, there are questions. Uh, we ask them, um, you know, how do they get those figures? And they, they run that down for us. And then we, we move forward from there and, and again, load the, the budget as, as I described before. So as, as far as the SAB, um, giving advice on that, uh, if you guys perceive or know of a of a need, um, the directors we use them because they are the people on the ground. They're getting the information from the supervisors. They're getting information from the field staff. They are uh, bringing in what the actual need in 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 the region is. Uh, so Western Mass might have much different needs than what the Boston region might have, or what the Southeast region must have. So the director is extremely important to be on top of the situation and really be looking over the, the services. Uh, the directors oversee um, the supervisors that are managing the social rehab and the vocational rehab services 
you know, same thing with our, our deaf blind extended supports unit. The manager oversees those individuals and they're, they are best in contact with all the, the demands that are being, uh, being brought in, um, you know, as far as program needs, funding needs that, that may be needed to support um, what's being brought into them from the field staff through their supervisors and, and the, the level of requests that are being made to them to uh, support with, with uh, uh, funding. So, so I would love to hear from everybody. Yeah, I think I understand your answer. And I would just say that you have a group of people here who are very attuned to what's going on in the world around and to, I would encourage you to utilize the group as much as you possibly can for that insight. And if this is a place you see it of some value, great. If not, it's certainly your prerogative, but I would just say, I think this group could bring some interesting insight. I don't know that it's gonna change anything necessarily dramatically for you, but perhaps could be helpful um, as we could see it as, as the process exists. So just something for you to, to give some thought to and to, uh, to consider. Um, okay, I think those were my questions related to your comments. I don't see anything else right at the moment. I'll pause just for a second to ask the SAB if they had any follow-ups for you. Looks like, yes, I think I see Kathy. Kathy, go ahead, please. Yeah, John, I just had a question on um, staffing. You mentioned you had four new staff starting in April and you have some open positions. What what type of roles did you recently fill and what are you looking to fill? Um, okay. Um, if you have that information. Uh, I don't have it handy, but I, I have some of it in my head. So let's see if I remember it all. Okay. So so we, we filled the budget director uh, we filled a um, a mobility instructor. Mm -hmm. um, we filled a rehabilitation teacher. Uh, the mobility instructor was in Worcester. The rehabilitation teacher was in uh, Southeastern Mass. Uh, we have recently filled a supervisor's role in our, our, our uh, Western Mass office. Uh, we have currently posted a supervisor for our new th uh, Northeast region. They are just about finished uh, the whole interview process and are going through that. Um, there's posted a supervisor in our region four Metro West region. That's um, about to get to the interview process. So the candidates are, have been contacted for interviews. Um, and we are, have posted a rehabilitation teacher in Region 6, which is our Boston office. Um, the manager and, and the committee are, are, and the HR are reviewing the candidates that are applying for that. Um, we had a rehabilitation teacher start in Region 4, uh, which again is the Metro West and, and south of Boston, some portions of south of Boston region. Um, so that's, that's about it. Uh, we are looking for a mobility instructor for region three, uh, but I'm, I'm getting into things that haven't been posted yet. It's about to be posted very shortly. Thank you. Very helpful. John, just to add one, um, there's also, I think we're very close to, um, replacing a VR worker in region one as well. That is correct. Perfect. Thank you, John. Um, to the, the next section we had here, and I wanted to, we wanted to share some thoughts with you. Um, I had the opportunity to, to individually solicit input from the SAB members, and uh, we thought it'd be helpful in order for really the members to be, continue to be comfortable serving on the SAB. There were some things that came up that uh, would be uh, important for the group to be able to engage with. And so I thought I'd share some of that. I can certainly put some of this down in a little more formal way, but this is the opportunity we have with you and we wanted to take full advantage to do that. So I'll go through it. And then I, I do see at least a few members of your team. Uh, John, I don't know exactly. I see Thelma, but I'm not sure who else is joining from the team, but uh, certainly it's important that you hear this and we'd love uh, to get your reaction, any thoughts you have. So let me go ahead and go through it. I've tried to aggregate the input that I individually received and just put it into one, uh, one document. So um, first thing is strategic plan. I think there were some questions regarding the strategic plan. We assume there is one. 
Not sure the group has seen it. Um, we would like to be able to review that. I think the group feels it could be uh, very effect, much more effective, perhaps, um, if we did understand the strategic plan of the group and how recently that's been done and assure that you know our thoughts are consistent with what clearly was agreed upon at some point around the strategic plan. So again, I'll let you comment. Let me go through it, and then we can come back to any areas that you'd like to. Um, we think it would be important to, to continue with a dashboard, uh, but we think that there are some additional pieces that might be helpful on the dashboard. I, I know that I, I believe um, that you mentioned that maybe Nate or someone is going to go through the dashboard with us today, and we, we appreciate that very much. Uh, this dashboard consists of some uh, numbers that are helpful, uh, and I will say when we go through that, there, there needs to be some definitions for, and for many of us in terms of what some of these things stand for. Again, I know it's basic for you guys, but for us to really understand it, it's helpful to, uh, to define some of it. But um, as far as the dashboard is concerned, we'd like to include some financial measures so that we can understand a little bit better. You now, based on budget, I already mentioned the budget side, it might be nice for us to have an opportunity to input to that. Uh, we're certainly not dictating anything. We are an advisory group and we want to advise. And this is a key part of, of what the commission does. So we'd be more comfortable with that. Um, and some additional details. And I'll give you some examples because we'd really like you and your team's thoughts too of what would help us to better understand what is going on, how the money is being spent, what some of the reality of waiting times and things like that are. So I'll try to give you some specifics that came up in the discussion. Um, so initially, uh, the initial communication from the time the caseworker communicates with someone to the availability of services. Uh, we do hear some data that tells us a little bit about how many the caseworker has, perhaps some of that. But as we talk to people who are availing themselves of our services, and maybe we're not asking the exact right question, but it's something to the extent of really where the rubber meets the road is when that initial communication with the caseworker takes place to when the availability of services happen. Again, I may, we may not have that perfect and we can come back to it, but something that gives us a little better idea of when action is actually happening and happy to, to hear from you on that. Um, Caseload is something that, that we'd like to know and understand better. And I think that may be uh, in the current uh, um, dashboard, but we just wanna make sure that that does exist. Uh, we'd even like, uh, the, the idea came up to invite the director of the caseworkers uh, to join us and we'd love to, to have a chat. I believe it's female, so I'll say her. I'm not, not sure on that, so forgive me, but uh, we'd love to, to get some engagement there and understand a little bit better from their perspective. Uh, these are, again, just a few examples. Um, Reallotment funds just continues to come up a lot. I don't think we were able to answer that question last month. Uh, if there's a way for us to have a better understanding and the public to have a better understanding of the reallotment funds, uh, how they're being used, what the balances are, where appropriate. I mean, if some, again, we're all fairly new here. So if we're asking questions that are not able to be shared, we certainly understand that, but we're going to make the ask and then you guys can, can decide on uh, what's most appropriate. Um, the survey, again, is a big issue. You alluded to it a little bit today. Um, we really want to know some detail around when we'll see some of that. And you shared that, John. So thank you. I think that helped clarify that for some of us. Um, the um, we'd like also to, as I mentioned earlier, any recommendations you or your team has as to what data points could be included in a dashboard that would help us all to to get an even better idea of the wonderful things you do. That would be great. Um, the team, multiple members of the team have asked for an org chart. Uh, so we'd really like to see that. I think it would help us to understand who everyone is. So each time people don't have to re-explain who they are and, and what their roles are. We'll still ask some of those questions, honestly, but um, but it'll help uh, for us to have a sense. So org chart would be extremely helpful. Um, the SAB also feels it would be helpful based on conversations and input uh, from our consumers to engage a bit more in the community uh, that is out there. Um, one suggestion, John, that was made, I thought it was a pretty good one, that perhaps, and maybe this exists already, so forgive me, but on the website uh, to list all the activities that are going on around MCB so that members of the SAB and members of the public uh, would have an opportunity to engage in some of those activities. And again, if that already exists, you can just tell us that already exists and we'll, we'll go there and, and look for that. Um, and then uh, another point that came up uh, that I don't think will have to be mentioned twice 
Uh, we want to assure this meeting is as easy as possible for those who are visually impaired. At times we're going through some data points, at times we're talking about information, we need to make sure we keep that in mind uh, to describe and discuss anything that we might be presenting. That came up as well and just wanted to make sure uh, that that was brought up. Um, let me make sure. Uh, perhaps there was one I didn't, I don't think I captured as well uh, regarding advocacy. Uh, stay connected to some of the advocacy groups or individuals. I don't know the person who brought that up. I think you know who you are. If you want to mention anything particular, I may not have captured that piece uh, as well as I could have. Um, but beyond that, I'll say those are our initial thoughts. Uh, love your reaction, and our hope is that we can address some of those. Thank you. Oh, I think we can we can address many of those. Um... Um, so let's go, can we, can we go through them? Just give me like the couple of words at, at the beginning of each. Sure. One. So the, sure. So well, the, the ones one that is, may be based, most appropriate for you to to comment on is let's start with strategic plans. Right. Right. So, so I, we have had strategic plans in the past at MCB. We've worked under strategic plans. Um, but the current, uh, the, the most recent commissioner, uh, did not go down that road. Um, I, we've had where we've gotten together, brought a consultant in, brought a strategic, uh, they, their strategic plan was written. We had that, it was followed, it was over, uh, extended over a period of time. And, and that's, that's how it was done. So right now, what happens is if, um, I think, I don't know how many agencies actually developed a, strate a strategic plan that's, that's in a formal setting, as I just described, um, but some do, I'm sure. Um, what happens is now that the, uh, some objectives are giving, given to the agencies by, um, the secretary and, and then the agency can add a couple of objectives in and, and then we, um, and that's how we use to evaluate each, uh, of our managers through the mass performance evaluation system. So strategic plan, I don't, uh, I. I find those helpful, but we didn't have one in place, a formal plan as, as you would normally occur. Next one. Well, yeah, before we move to the next one, just to comment on that, if I may, and any of the yeah. other members, I, it looks like uh, Brian has joined us as well. Welcome, Brian. Yeah. Um, the uh, group believes that it would be very helpful. And as a, an advisory group, we will advise you to consider a strategic plan. We think that would be very helpful, particularly given where we've been over these past few months and where I know you want to go. Um, we all believe that that would be in the best interest of the commission. So we are advising that you give some consideration to that. Sure, will do. Um, next thing was uh, we were talking about a dashboard and maybe enhancing the current yeah. dashboard that you provide and that I know you guys work hard on. Yeah. Um, and one of the specifics was, maybe you want to comment on this, is the initial communication from the caseworker to availability of services. That seemed like an important timeline. You can say yay or nay to that, but th this came up in the discussion. So you want us to record uh, when the worker, the date that the worker makes an initial contact? Is that you know, I, I, and I want to speak for everybody so people can jump in here. I think the idea here is not to add tremendous amount of work for you, but I would think this would be an important data point. We believe that we think this might be an important data point to understand. If you don't believe it's an important data point, you can certainly say, I don't think so. But if it is, and it's something not just for us, uh, it's nice that you would provide it to us, but we think it's something important for all of you to understand because when we talk to some of the consumers, that's sort of their guideposts, right? They're not judging it maybe necessarily consistently with the way we do. I would think we would want to make sure we're looking at it from a similar perspective. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, if that isn't the right data point, but this is what we hear from a user of your of our services. So um, perhaps it's a better metric for us to understand it from our consumers' perspective. No, that's that's a good data point. We we do um, keep that. Uh, I mean, the the supervisors uh, know when they assign a case, and they they see when a case note is entered in. Um, we will certainly check uh, if we can pull that data from our our uh, 
case management system. Uh, Nate is on here. So do you have anything else to add on that, Nate? Yeah, I think uh, it's something that we could, yeah, as long as the notes in there, I think we'd be all set by pulling that. Um, we do know the amount of time, the average amount of time, like when a case is registered, when, you know, an initial contact with the registry, how long that takes to get out to um, the different regions. And then from there, it would be understanding when that initial contact's made um, in the region to the point of uh, that intake appointment. So I, I think that's the, 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 the piece of data that we'll need to get that last yeah. piece. Yeah, we'll certainly look in our system and, and, and see if we can uh, come up with, uh, with that. I, as Nate mentioned, uh, once they put a case note in that they've scheduled an appointment, we could always use that date on that case note or the date that they see the client, if they put that date in, uh, in, in the case note, we can pull those dates off and have a, uh, an average time seen because some workers will have a higher caseload than others. So it may be longer, but it, otherwise we'd have to break it down by individual worker, but we can take an average by the region or an average by rehab teachers or mobility instructors or VR counselors or social workers. Uh, to, uh, computer text, we can try to do an average there, but otherwise we would have to go through each uh, individual field uh, service worker and have their supervisors collect all that data and then um, bring that back um, to us so we can have uh, some numbers by region or that would work. So yeah, we'll, we'll certainly take a look into that. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be good. And, and I don't want to take too much time on this. I will send you a, a document that captures this. The other things we mentioned were reallotment funds, getting a little idea of where that is, yep. survey, which you've already done, and then the org chart. Those were the three things. Right. If you so, wanted. so the org chart, we certainly can, uh, uh, we can provide that. Um, and that changes. And so that's updated on a, you know, a, a frequent basis uh, the past uh couple of years, uh, lots of changes have occurred. So uh, we can certainly provide that and, um, you know, we will work with, you know, on what, again, whatever data we need. Thank you. And then the calendar of events, it looks like Kathy wants to say something real quick. Is that something that yes. exists right now? Could we go onto the MCB website and see all, all of the events taking place around sponsored by, supported by MCB? Uh, Mike, are you on the call? So I don't think he is, John. Okay. So typically, we've been uh, using Facebook a lot to send out different events that uh, are going on um, around the blind community. Uh, we've shared a lot of our, our town hall meetings. We've shared a lot of our events that are open to the public. Um, we've been using our social media to really put those out there. Um, we we also, if if uh, organizations send information to us, uh, we've sent those out through uh, social media. So if, if we want to be more specific, if there's a particular group that we haven't sent something out for, but uh, well, uh, what, yes, no, I, I don't know. I'm giving you feedback that the group is bringing to you. Yep. Um, I think that if Facebook is a great place for people to go who are visually impaired and that it's accessible and all those great things, that probably is okay. We can go there. It would seem to make sense to be very friendly to our users and to have something on the MCB site. Again, uh, it's been made clear over and over. We are an advisory board. We're offering some suggestions on what we think could be helpful. This came from board members who are users of, of your services, either past or current. And it's a suggestion. It, it, you know, we know you can't do everything. You'll have to prioritize. You know what you feel you need to do. But we feel our job is to give you our thoughts in terms of how we think we could continue to improve. Because this group in particular, and I'm hoping even more, are interested in engaging a little bit more in the activities of MCB. Um, be present a little bit more, perhaps. Uh, that was even suggested at the last call, and I think we've all taken that very seriously. I think it was a fair critique that do you guys get out there? Do you talk to users, et cetera? And I, I think we've all taken that very seriously. So we're thinking of suggested ways to make it a little easier for everyone. Um, but if Facebook is the way to go, we we are capable of getting on Facebook and trying to follow that way. Well, that, that's the social media, what was being emphasized by 
uh, recent commissioner, but I, I, in years past, we had an information tape that we used to put out. I'm not opposed to having a, in a, your advice, we could have a community page where our communications director could post that and people go to our website and click on that and see the different announcements, different community uh, conferences that might be coming up by, from the consumer organizations. Uh, you know, a lot of the uh, events that occur at the uh, Museum of, uh, of uh, Art, uh, the MFA. So it, we, uh, we put that out through social media, but we, we can also put up a community page um, if, um, you know, and as another way to reach out to folks. That'd be great. And we will have some time at the end if any of our consumers have any comments on this, particularly if we're good and they get the information they need or they'd like more, uh, I hope they would speak up. But thank you. Thank you, John. Um, okay. So I, again, I will send you that information and, and we'll, we'll follow up. Um, I guess we'll, if we could go to Nate, if you don't mind, unless there was anything uh, that you wanted to additionally to comment on. And Nate, if I could ask you, to, could you get it done in 10 minutes? That would be fantastic. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Um, there looks like there is a question, Howard, from uh, Debbie. I'm sorry. Okay, if Debbie, if it's related to something we've already discussed, go ahead. If not, we will hold to the end, but go ahead, Debbie. Uh, it can wait till the end. Thank you. We will make sure you're the first question that we take. Um, and I'm sorry, Nate, I'm going to interrupt you one more second. Kathy, I think I may have missed your hand. If I did, please jump in. I, yeah, thank you. I just wanted to, you mentioned, um, Howard, when you were going through dashboard wishes, I guess, of the SAB members that, and you mentioned caseload. So I just wanted to reiterate that because that's something that I'd be interested in seeing data on. Um, in that Globe article, there was mention of, um, you know, rising caseloads and shrinking workforce, which you know, is a raise a concern in me. So I'd like to just make sure we include that information in any type of dashboard reporting going forward. So that was all. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. And Debbie, I promise we'll come to you. Nate, now you have eight minutes. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to share the dashboard here. All right. So I have the dashboard up. Um, I just need to move some things around. All right, so we have an Excel spreadsheet up here uh, titled MCB Dashboard. Um, the data was taken on both Friday 4, uh, 28 and Monday 5, 1 uh, for different areas, just because of different ports we have to uh, run to pull this together. And I do want to say before I get started here, I'm willing to talk to anybody about information to include on this, um, information how it's presented on this uh, form as well um we can adjust anything this the, the form that we're currently using is something that was agreed upon earlier in, in in the process when i was involved um and i'd be happy to adjust it in any way um that people would like to to um go through it so i'm um, gonna start with total registrations currently for uh this calendar year 2023 we're at 588 um registrations completed that was as of friday of last week. Um, last year, we were at 2,174 total registrations for the year. Um, and the two years before that, we were um, just over 1,000. Um, the two years before that, obviously, were the COVID years, a lot less people in and out of the um, providers. Um, we had a little bit of an influx last year because more people kind of flooding back into the providers with things opening back up. Um, so we're a little bit behind the numbers we are last year, but I think that is the reason why. Um, the next section of the dashboard includes registrations, and this is just where registrations are currently in process with the agency. Um, currently, right now, re registrations probably take one to three days to process through that team. Um, the registration is submitted by a provider. Um, MCB reviews that registration to be sure that they are um, legally blind by the parameters set and then from there it is sent out to the regions um, for case assignment and to make that initial call for the intake appointment um, as of friday uh, the snapshot we had zero in quality control we had one um, that was kind of in process uh, through central reg and we had 10 uh, that needed review for further verification. And what needs verification means, it could be it been, when the was submitted online, it could have been missing um, information we need to register, 
or it might be the I report needs to be reviewed further by a consultant. Currently, um, open, and S, open SR and SRC cases, these are social rehabilitation cases and uh, the social rehabilitation children cases, that's what SR and SRC stand for. Um, we've seen a dip in um, our SR adults by about 98, um, just uh, pretty much even in our SR children. We have 800, uh, a total of 2,078 for the SR adults and our DBES uh, consumers, and that's um, deaf, blind, extended services consumers. Um, we're at about 1,000, and we saw an increase of about 31 in that category. And Nate, those are total, those are not new. Those are total open cases. Yeah, those are ones that are currently in process and being served in some capacity with the agency. Okay. Uh, so for open vocational rehabilitation cases, um, we currently have 623, that's 81 less than we took the snapshot out in, in, in November, um, 191 pre-ETS, those are our um, 14 um, to 18 in, uh, aged individuals, um, or maybe up to 21. Um, and we have 16 youth in transition. Now we've seen a decrease in all of these um but it's it's it we had a lot of cases closed in recently too so we'll see i can show you that as well when we get a little bit further down but nothing alarming there um so closed sr and src cases again that's social rehabilitation cases and social um the children cases uh we had 23 closed children cases so far this year um and for uh the SR adults, we had 803 cases closed uh, this year already. Closed VR cases. Uh, so this is going fiscal year, not calendar year. So this is going from um, July 1st through, uh, I ran this yesterday. Uh, we had a 110 successful closures. Uh, to give you kind of a... Um, a benchmark, we had 145 the last two years for the total fiscal year. The year before that, we had 93. So we had a lot of successful closures through COVID. Um, I think that could also be partially because of more opportunities for um, telework and those type of things that, that arose during that time um, that allowed people to kind of find a, a good situation. Um, and then we had 95 so far this year uh, close unsuccessfully. So that's compared to 85 and 80 the last two years, uh, the COVID years, and then 121 the year before that. Support services, these are the number of people that are being referred to rehabilitation teaching, um, assistive technology, or orientation and mobility. Uh, currently this year, we've had 1,337 referrals to one of those um, one of those areas. Now, one person could be referred multiple times so they could be referred to at they could be referred to rt and they could be referred to uh, orientation mobility as well um and this is an um an additional piece that we put in uh, we're calling auxiliary services this is through central registration and this is the amount of certificates of blindness produced uh per year um mcb ids um mass edp which is um the um the phones um, and the handicap placards. So last year, just to kind of give you a benchmark, we processed through central registration alone, so close to 7,400 um, certificates of blindness for people across the Commonwealth. Um, and they use those for a number of different things. It could be for tax abatements. It could be for, for other services in the area. Uh, we produced uh, close to 1,000 um, IDs. Uh, we referred 487 uh, EDP applications over and did 78 um, placards. Currently this year, um, we've done 2,500 um, certificates of blindness, 374 IDs, 210 EDPs, and 35 handicap placards. Um, now, the, this I think it's also important to mention the COBs are just what's being processed through the central registry. We also have the ability to process that in the field. So someone could call up any worker and say, I need a COB. They can go into a reg case, print it out, or email it to that person individually. 
So just to kind of give you an idea of how many of those certificate blindness are going out each year, I thought that was uh, an interesting number for us to look at as well. Nate, um, excuse yes. me, this is Kathy P. Are those the ones that are being processed in the field, are those reflected in these numbers or are these just through central registry? These are just through central registry. So okay. th those numbers are in addition to, to what is listed here. Um, we're going to work on capturing those numbers to add those as well. But I, I do believe that's, you know, in the thousands in addition to this that people are doing. I know oftentimes when I'm in the office, I get a call. I'll just print it out right there or send it via email right there. And that's not being processed through that registration team. Or maybe a self-service model. Where yeah, that's download that, their own. Yeah, that's a great suggestion, Kathy. Um, so, yeah, so that's the numbers for 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 um, this month. And I'd love to hear feedback, um, more um, additional numbers that you guys might want to see, different ways that it's presented. Uh, definitely work on adding the case notes. I think that's a, a great suggestion and I'll, I'll start to pull that together for next month. So um, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, thank you, Nate. Uh, we'll take questions. I, I'll kick it off here just quickly because I know we're, we're winding down on time. I wanna make sure we take Debbie's questions and any others that might exist. But uh, I guess what I'm trying to get a sense for, because I appreciate there's been a couple of years that are tough to gauge from during a pandemic. Right. But is it fair to say that and when we look at total registrations, around between 1,000 and 1,200 a year is about, if we went back further pre-pandemic, would yeah. we see about 1,000 to 1,200 total registrants? Is that typical? I think it's, I think the the 12, the 1,000 to 1,200 was more of the COVID um, numbers. I think a regular year, Howard, would be, um, closer to the 2000 mark, um, whether it's a little bit below or above that. I think most of the numbers would, um, I could go back a little bit further too and take a look and uh, present that at the next uh, meeting as well. That might be interesting because as just reminded people, you had 588 for your number in 2023. I think that's a year to date number, which yep. would put us perhaps just north of that, maybe, I don't know, 12, in that 1200 range. Maybe I didn't do the math, so don't hold me to that, but yeah. somewhere in that neighborhood, which is quite less than 2,000, but you believe ultimately we work our way back to somewhere around a 2,000 number. Yeah, I think I think years past is between like 1,800 and 2,000. I think right now we're at, it would put us around 1,600 for the year, um, which is a little bit lower. Um, but I think that's also because we had an influx last year where people were getting in from sitting in for COVID and now we don't have that steady number yet. I think it's gonna take a couple of years till we get to that average number that we're going to see and it's also changing um you know it's something that's interesting to see it has declined over the years because of modern medicine and things like that there's there is less people being registered um depending on you know advancements in medicine and those type of things too all right thank you all right i will turn it over to any of the sab members if they have any questions thank you nate though appreciate you going through it we will provide you with some of the information we just discussed and again, you, your team, if you say, you know what, I think it'd be helpful for you to have this piece of data too. This is a good way of understanding X. We would be absolutely open to that as well. We're just trying to give you our perspective of what we think if we knew we could be more helpful or helpful as a, an advisory group, but, but we're open to your, to your thoughts on that. But thank you for presenting the information. And by the way, thank you for the detail you went into. It was helpful for me and I'm more senior than my colleagues in this. So it was helpful for me to hear some of the terminologies, et cetera. So appreciate you, you going through that, even though I know it's second nature for you. It's the type of thing that can involve as we go too. So, you know, it, I might add things and you might say, hey, I don't need that anymore. Or, hey, it would be really helpful like you have to see this data. It can evolve as we go. And can we yeah, I have a quick question for me, if that's okay. Yeah, Blair, one second. We're going to come to okay. you next. Go ahead, Kathy. I was just to say, if we could see that dashboard every month, I think it will really help to build some foundation for us as board members. And we'll get used to the terminology and the acronyms and the numbers. And we can, like you said, it can evolve and we can build on it going forward. But I, I think, especially after everything that occurred, occurred recently, the more data is better from Absolutely. our perspective. So that that was great. And I support Howard in his thanks to you for bringing that information to us today. So very helpful, Nathan. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. All right, Blair, you're up, buddy. Uh, Nathan, thank you. Um, from a client perspective, I think what's really important, if, if there is any data you can provide, 
is once a client and a caseworker determine their plan of action to um, meet the needs of the client in terms of whether it be SR or VR training, um, what is the actual time frame in which those services are delivered to the client? Um, and yeah. if we could have a breakdown on why certain cases are successful. Um, I'm just curious if based upon the article with the overload of uh, caseworkers, if somehow the rate of unsuccessful is a breakdown in communication between the client and the caseworker where uh, clients really don't know how to advocate for themselves and if, if services are delayed, then um, they just kind of give up on um, waiting for the services to occur. So yeah, absolutely. We could provide data in those two categories to break them down a little bit further. Because I think that's where uh, the rubber meets the road is a client who needs services, how long does it take to get those services once a plan of action has been determined between the client and the caseworker and it's been agreed upon? And, and perhaps understaffing may be part of it. You know, are there enough mobility trainers? Are there enough rehab trainers? SR trainers to meet the needs of all the different clients uh, throughout the state. Yeah, absolutely. And, and obviously, every consumer has a different runway, right? Some might be longer mm -hmm. than others, depending on where they are and their 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 journey to their goals. So but yeah, I think we can take a look at that and look at some of the information around that and have a further discussion. And just real quickly, I thought the survey was really interesting. The question, some of them uh, that were in the survey, when was the last time a survey uh, asking clients uh, you, your satisfaction and uh, with all the VR and SR services that you've been receiving. When was the last time that kind of survey was sent out? I'm not sure the last time something was that was sent out. Maybe John might know that, um, but right, that's something we I, I really wanted to include in this particular piece because we want to know how we're doing and we want to know if there's gaps in services in different places. And I was very pleased to see, I got to see some of the early results that come back and it's very positive. So um, I'm very excited when we are able to report out on this and and talk about uh, this survey further when we have kind of everything aggregated together in the report. Um, that's something I definitely want to highlight. And uh, my last comment is if the survey is a uh, long time in between being conducted, uh, is there a regular survey of clients? So we have so many, a uh, certain number of new clients this year uh, four months later after they've been uh, registered into the system, is there a follow-up to the client asking Blair, them, how satisfied are you with the services you received so far? Blair, your timing couldn't be better on that question. We're actually in the discussion of that now, um, of, of implementing okay. something very similar to that and, and what that would look like. But yeah, something that would be done at the end of services to get some valuable feedback from consumers is, is what we're talking about. Okay. If we could do that even sooner, like periodically throughout the yeah. client's progression through the training uh, in plan of action, uh, that would be really meaningful. Great. Thank, Thank you, Blair. Hey, uh, you may not have had a chance, but in the chat, it does mention, could the SAB members please get the survey questions? We understand you're not ready to share the data, but many of us have not seen the survey questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Blair had opportunity to see those. So we'd love to take a look and make us smarter about any questions we can ask. Debbie has been incredibly patient. Debbie, thank you very much for your patience. We appreciate it. Um, please go right ahead. You have the floor. Hi. Yeah. Um, good morning. I just had a couple of questions. Um, first of all, in the beginning, it was mentioned that we got level funding. And I was just curious as to if that is we got what we got last year or we got what we asked for or how does that work with when we go in and ask for that initial chunk of money to run the agency the thank you debbie um maybe the acting commissioner is the best one to answer that john would you be able to answer that for debbie so when we say level funded that means that we the governor's budget um is came out what we got last year. This is only state dollars, so it's not it's not the entire agency budget. So the twenty seven point one million is is roughly what we got uh, during the Baker administration. Um, so 
that's what we mean by level funding. It does not count earmarks. It does not count any other amendments that might be uh, added on by the legislators. It does not count any any other sort of funding that may come after. But um, so that's that's all that means. It's very early on in the process. Um, so you know you can get level funded. You could be overfunded or you could be underfunded. So it's always good to start with level funding because at least you know you have very similar funds to what you had last year. So the su support is there to offer the same level of services. Again, excluding the earmarks, those are are um, being uh, lobbied by uh, by uh, the nonprofits or consumer groups or other interested. Groups. Okay, so I guess what my question would be is. When do we start trying to get more than level funding if we've recognized that we need more money, not just with earmarks and everything else, which was brought to light, um, that we need more staff and that um, inflation and cost of services are going up. And there's an increase in people who want services on a more regular basis because that dashboard that you just showed me or what if those figures, I'm wondering, out of the 27, you know, 28. I think we lost, did we lose Debbie? I think we lost Debbie, unfortunately. I'm gonna ask uh, particularly the members who can stay and, and members of MCB, I know we're a little over time. I see one additional question so far and I want Debbie to make sure when she gets back, she's able to ask her. So Amy, we're gonna move to you. And when Debbie jumps back on, we may have to just, uh, reinstigate our conversation with her. But Amy, please go right ahead. Thank you. Um, just two very quick, uh, one, one comment and one request. And the first is a comment, uh, just thank you uh, both to Nate and to John. I'm really delighted and I think I speak for the community in appreciating John, the, the, shoes that you've stepped into and are uh, filling so capably. So thank you for that. And also just a request, I'm actually taking time off from work to attend this meeting, which I cannot normally do. We used to meet, uh, this SAB used to meet at noontime and I would respectfully request that that practice of returning to a noontime meeting be considered because for those people who are working, and for those people who may be from MCB who want to attend as well as, uh, and, and for those of us uh, who are vendors and community providers who can only attend during lunch hour, it would be very helpful if this meeting could be moved back to noontime. So I would appreciate your consideration. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate your, uh, I appreciate your input. We do. And uh, I, we all agree in terms of the, the compliments provided to John, Nate, and the whole team. We appreciate the efforts they're making. Thank you. Debbie, I think you're back. We lost Hi. you. I apologize. Uh, please carry on. Hi, I'm sorry. My, my technology died. So what I, I guess, um, I kind of lost my train of thought. I guess what I was asking is, you know, like, when can we, like, how do we ask for more money when we need, I mean, we to need more money to up the level funding to more money. And my concern when I saw all those numbers from Nate was out of like the 30,000 people in Massachusetts say rounding up that are blind mm -hmm. at any one given time, it seems like we have open cases of what 3000, you know, maybe, maybe a little more like, are we looking to increase like the services, the amount of services, the the besides the quality and all all that stuff, but to have a higher number of blind people being served by the MCB with you know open cases as far as getting the the technology lessons like I just went through or getting programs or getting services from the MCB is that like a goal is to have these numbers increase and have the money and the staff available there to, to serve us, to give us more programs, more training, more, you know, I'm thinking of the SR because that's who I'm advocating for. Or is this just normal that 
at any, this is the amount that we're, because I see consistently over the last three years is all we've gone back is these numbers are relatively about the same. Do, don't we want to be, have more people being helped at any one given time? So Nate showed that the numbers in VR are, are actually dropping a little bit. The numbers in, in SR, um, they are pretty stable. Uh, they're, they're rising a little bit, but they drop. It depends on the different times of the year. Um, so uh, we don't have a waiting list. So therefore we are serving the consumers that call the agency, that contact the agency. So it, it, we are serving everyone that is calling the agency. That, that's, yeah, that's everyone who calls, but I'm looking like the percentage, like what percentage, you know, because people don't call because they don't know. People don't call because they've called before and didn't get what they want. There's a lot of reasons why people might might not be calling. But I'm just looking at our numbers. Is, is that a good percentage out of 30,000 blind people helping 3,000? Is, is that good? I mean, maybe that's good. Maybe that's maybe that's how it works. I really don't know. I just think if people knew what you could provide or if people knew that there were services beyond the average, just get your blind certificate. If there was more money put into technology courses, like I just went through, and I know a few other people on this call have gone through, they, they would they would wanna do this stuff, but it's it takes money and it takes people. Um, so I just don't know if the goal is to up our game. Well, the goal is to serve everyone that need, that would like to receive services or needs services. Um, and as those as those uh, needs are made more uh, more made to, to the agency or requested, I mean there, there is a process in the budget process, and then after the budget process, I'm assuming there's a budget there's a process where a uh, an agency can ask uh, the secretary if there is any more funding available. Um, so that's um, that's where that would go based on you show we show the need and then uh, after the budget is is uh, all in place, then maybe more money could be found. But uh, we we have been able to meet the need uh, uh, through. Uh, obviously, efforts in the past several years oh, yeah. by, by the uh, by uh, the community lobbying for additional funds for SR consumers. Um, there is plenty of money on the vocational side. We we take roughly a year and a half to spend the allocation that we get uh, the the uh, that we get from the the federal government. So there is plenty of money on the vocational rehab side. To give folks the individual the training that they need, but their vote, their goal has to be uh, employment. And there's um, then some demand, and and uh, that's been shown by the earmark being used. Um, but again, um, that's a process that was used to get those funds. Uh, if we see those needs, I mean, there's also there's different methods. I mean, so if it, it it triggers a whole bunch of other situations. Like you talk about, I don't think this agency has ever been able to serve 30,000. And that number close to 30,000 is a number that's held steady for many, many years. Uh, some commissioners have gone up a little bit, some have gone down, but it, it's right in that ballpark. And we have never had the staff that would be able to serve all those individuals and provide them with the amount of training that everybody may may want or may need. John, I apologize. I'm going to have to jump in. I want to be mindful of the, the committee's time, et cetera. But I, this, this is an answer that probably requires a little bit more time, and maybe we can come back to this. We can come back to this. 
uh, next month because I do think two things, a dashboard would help answer, uh, a little more detailed dashboard will help answer some of Debbie's questions. And I do think a strategic plan will help make a greater argument because clearly uh, understanding the numbers will get a better sense for whether or not uh, there is a greater need and can make an argument for that. I'm going to apologize to Sang Pham. We apologize. We're already 10 minutes in. So if you could hold that question, either send it directly to the commissioner, myself, or save it for next month. I do apologize, but I want to be mindful of everybody's time. Thank you again, everyone, for joining. Once again, Nate, John, thank you very much for all that you're doing to keep the the uh, commission continuing to move forward and serve the community. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all and we'll continue to support you in any way we can. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.